So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he said, um, after he said, Al-Yaqeenu la yazulu bishak, and we explained that point, he said, Adkhalu fihi min al-ibadati wal-mu'amalati wal-huquqi wal-huquqi shay'an kathira. And this qa'ida, Al-Yaqeenu la yazulu bishak, they entered it into babu al-ibadat. So it's used for many matters of ibadat, and it's also used for matters of mu'amalat, transactions. That principle, it falls under ibadat, and it also falls under mu'amalat, which is transactions. Wal huquq and the people's rights. The rights of the people. Shay'an kathiran. This qa'ida enters ibadat, and it enters mu'amalat, and it also even enters into al huquq rights of the people. So it's not exclusive to one point. But it's a qa'ida which can be applied to kitab uh, al-ibadat, kitab al-mu'amalat, huquq. Uh, so that's what the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he is saying. Naam. فَمَنْ حَصَلَ لَهُ الشَّكُّ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْهَا رَجْعَ إِلَى الْأَصْلِ مُتَيَقَّنْ So anyone who, it happens to him, فَمَنْ حَصَلَ لَهُ الشَّكُّ Anyone who doubt enters his heart. في شيء منها in any of those uh, either the ibadat or a matter of mu'amalat or a matter of huquq. Anyone who doubt enters him. Shak. Raja'a ila al-asli. He goes back to the asal. And we spoke about the types of asal there were previously. Raja'a ila al-asli. You go back to the original essence. al mutayak that we are sure of. The asal is what we're sure of. So we go back to what we're sure of and we leave off what we're doubtful of. Like for example, a man is married to a woman and he doubts whether he divorced his wife. As I mentioned that as a previous example. Lo shakka rajulu. A man doubts. Hal tallaqa zawjah. Did I divorce my wife? Hal tallaqa zawjatahu amla. He's doubtful. Have I divorced my wife or not? Or has he divorced his wife or not? There's that doubt. We will say to him, no, you, you haven't divorced your wife. You haven't divorced your wife because nikah. We will go back to the essence of the nikah that we're sure of. And we're going to base the ruling on the certainty. And that which we're sure of is that you are married to this woman. And we have no evidence to prove that this marriage has come to an end. Because it's doubt. So, any matter, doubt enters it. Forget this doubt, get rid of it, and stick to what you know and you're sure of. Naam. وَقَالُوا الْأَصْلُ الطَّاهِرَةُ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Now what the Shaykh is going to do, he's going to mention four things that fall under this qa'idah. الْيَقِينُ لَا يَزُولُ بِالشَّكْ The Shaykh is going to mention four things that will fall under it. And they are not only these four, there are more than that. لَكِنْ هَذَا عَلَى سَبِيلِ تَمْتِيلِ لَا لَلْحَصْرِ It's just example, and it's not that this is all of it. The first one he says is what? الأصل الطهارة في طهارة في كل طهارة في كل شيء. The original essence of everything is that it's pure, unless there comes a evidence that proves it that it's impure, or certainty. The evidence can be certainty or any anything that if certainty comes, then of course it loses impurity. It loses its purity and it becomes impure. But if we don't know, then we stick with the أصل. The أصل is every single every single thing is pure. Unless there comes a certain evidence or proof that proves that this thing is not pure. So as an example, if a person pours water over you and you don't know who it was and you don't know where it came from, then the asal is al-aslu at-taharatu fi kulli shay. Everything is pure. The question is that, are you sure that it's impure? No. So let's go back to the asal, is that it's pure. So it falls under this qa'ida. It falls under this qa'ida, al-yaqeenu la yazulu bishak. Naam. وَالْأَصْلُ الْإِبَاحَةُ إِلَّا مَا دَلَّ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَى نَجَاسَةِ أَوْ تَحْرِيمِهِ And also the asal is what? وَالْأَصْلُ الْإِبَاحَةُ The asal is permissibility. Everything is permissible for you. إِلَّا مَا دَلَّ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَى نَجَاسَتِهِ Unless the evidence proves that this thing is impure or the evidence proves, or the evidence, uh, proves that this thing is what? It is impermissible. So the person who says that this thing is haram. He has to provide evidence. He has to give a, a, a certain evidence 
to remove it from its original essence. Because the original essence was what? Permissibility. Unless there comes an evidence and proves it. What? That this thing is impure. Oh, this O oh is lit tanwi'ah. Oh, tahrimihi, because sometimes O oh comes as atf, and sometimes it comes as tanwi'ah. Uh, oh, oh, tahrimihi, or it's prohibition, meaning they're both separate. Najasatu wa tahrimu are two separate. If you say ta'atf, you can you connect the two together. No, they're not. So, al aslul ibaha, everything is originally permissible. You're allowed to use it as you wish, you're allowed to eat whatever you see. As long as there doesn't come an evidence that it makes it impermissible. And of course, we talked about the issue of asal, four types that we categorize it into. Naam. Well, aslu bara'atu dhimami min al wajibat wa min huquq al khalqi hatta yaqum al dalilu ala khilafi dhalik. This qa'id again is what? Well, aslu, the original essence of what is bara'atu dhimami. My neck is free from what? Min al wajibat. No one, there's no wajib on me. No wajibat is on me. From Allah wa ta'ala. Unless there comes the evidence. I'm originally free. Unless there comes an evidence that says to me, this is a wajib, you have to do it. Okay? So, al-asal is that bara'atu So if somebody says, this is wajib, I say to him, where's your dili? And then al-asal is what? Bara'atu dhimami. My, my neck is free from anything. I can't be obliged to do anything unless there comes an evidence and proves that I have to do this. That's Allah Taala's حقوق. Also, ومن حقوق الخلق, and also from the rights of the creation as well. Even the rights of the creation, no one can tell me you have to do this. I'm a free individual. Also, he said حتى يقوم الدليل على خلاف ذلك. Unless there comes a what? Unless there comes a evidence in opposition to the asal. A evidence comes and says you have to do this. Like for example. My mother has rights on me, my father has rights on me because of the deleed that came and that removed the asal here. So the asal is bara'atu dhimami min al wajibati wa min huquq al khalqi hatta yaqum al dalil ala khilafi dhalik. For example, also the person is free from any what? Any claims that a person may attribute to him. Meaning, I'm innocent. I'm an innocent individual. There's nothing you have on me. That you can claim that is yours because the original essence that is, I am a, when I was born, no one had anything against me. No one uh, could claim anything onto me. You're trying to remove me from my original essence. You're the one who has to bring evidence. My proof is the fact that I am innocent. You have to prove that I am guilty of this. So, in the court of law, in Islamic court, this person is innocent. The asal is innocent. The qadi won't look at this person and say, prove your innocency. No. He won't tell him to prove your innocency. He will say to the other one, prove he's guilty. Limada, why? Because the, him being guilty is, is a mas'alatun tari'ah. It's a matter that's falling onto him. It's falling onto, onto him. Meaning he is, it's, guilty is not the essence of the human being or anyone. So the judge would turn to the other person who's accusing him of this and say to him, bring us evidence. Bring us what? Evidence that this person is guilty and this person he says to just be quiet when he brings the evidence now when this one goes and he brings the evidence Now all that's needed from the one who has been accused of this is to swear that this is false He's the other one who's been accused has to be. so first this is how it works You, you say he's guilty Naam, prove he's guilty. He goes out of his way. He brings witnesses. He, he brings proof now this proof he brings he has done his part. The other person, he has to be what? The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, لَوْ يُعْطَ النَّاسَ بِدَعْوَاهُمْ If everybody was given what they claim, لَدَّعَ رِجَالَ أَمْوَالَ قَوْمٍ وَدِمَاءَهُمْ A people would have claimed people's money and their blood. Everyone would just go and say, his money is mine. And he would have said, oh, he killed my family member, or he did this to me, or um, kill him, and he would be killed for it. If everyone's claims were just to be taken. Like in the Prophet, then what did he say? The one who's claiming, bring your evidence. And the other one, he has to just swear, Wallahi, I, was, I never did this. And Wallahi, his things that he's bringing forward against me are all lies. And etc. 
and then the Qadi picks it up from there. And then if you look at this, this is the thing that made <coughs> Islam pass everyone else. It made everyone pass everyone else. And subhanAllah, Islam is the religion that stood up to cover people. A person commits zina. Witnesses, not one, not two. Witnesses have to come to prove what? That this person committed the zina. If one person sees it and he comes, and he did see it, and it really did happen, if he tells it, in Islam he's a fasiq. Huh? He's a fasiq. His witness is never taken into consideration, you see? And he's whipped. He's whipped, even if he did see it, even if it did happen. Why? You didn't have the remaining other witnesses with you. So this qa'idah is very important. And that's why I say to everybody, uh, every talib of ilm, a student of knowledge, he should always learn what is the istishab of every mas'ala? What's the asal? So the one who's on the asal shouldn't go out his way looking for evidence. Your evidence is the asal. The other person should be the one who's looking for the, who's looking for the evidence. You're just the one who just say, look, akhi, istishab. Biqa' ma kan ala ma kan. I am upon the original essence. You're the one who has to now go out of his way and prove it. Don't send me a, uh, on a goose chase to find the evidence for this matter. It's not my job. It's your job. Are you, are you with me? So, al aslu bara'a tu zimami min al wajibati wa min hukuk al khalqi hatta yakum al dalil ala khilaf dalik. Naam. Wal aslu baqa'u mashtagalat bihi al zimami min hukuk Allahi wa hukuk ibadatihi hatta yatak hatta yataqan al bara'a hatta yatayak. This one is also well, aslu, the asal of what is what? Bika, to, for, the asal for it to remain Anything that is on your neck which you have placed it somewhere you, it has to remain upon it the way it is. Meaning, meaning I went to your shop and I said to you Akhi Give me this water. And you went out of your way and you brought me water. You. And then I said to you, I don't have the money. I don't have the, the money for the water. And my family need it. So you said to him, okay, give me your watch. I take my watch off. I pass my watch over to you. This watch now becomes yours. For the, for, until I bring you the money. Whenever, if I don't bring that money, then there's a hakam and rulings pertaining to it, but then you sell this. Okay, now. I have to go give my children, the days go by, I have to bring back the money. The asal is, whatever is under your, this mas'ala which is with you and it's busy on something, which it's already busy. This thing is busy, the watch is busy on what? It is busy on making sure that I bring back the money. The asal is that you're not allowed to tamper with that. You're not allowed to try to sell it. So I've sold the water and I tell a person, oh um, brother uh, Abdullah, he has my watch, it's in his hand. Inshallah ta'ala, I sell it to you this much and I'll get it back to you in three days. No, I can't do that. Al-Asru biqa'u mashtagalat bihi dhimamu min hukuk Allah if it's Allah's rights. Wa hukuk ibadi or the rights of the creation hatta until yatayaqqanu you are certain al-bara'at wal ada that you are free from it and you've established the rights of that thing. I've given the person their, their money back and now I take my watch, it becomes mine. I then and only then can I say to him, Akhi, here it is, buy it from me, and we can sell it to each other. The asal is, you can't tamper with it. Naam. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, before I move on, the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, all of those four that he mentions, which is al-aslu al-taharatu fi kulli shay, wal-aslu al-ibahatu illa ma dalla dalilu ala najasati aw tahrimihi. The third one, wal-aslu bara'atu al-dhima min min al-wajibat wa min al-hukuq al-khalqi hatta yaqoom al-dalilu ala khilafi thalika. And the fourth one, wal-aslu biqa' ma shtagalat bihi al-dhima min hukuq illahi wa hukuq ibadi hatta yatayaqqan al-bara'at wa al-ada'a. All four of those that he mentions, they all fall under al-yaqeenu la yazulu bishak aw la yuzalu bishak. It falls under that. All of those, they fall under that. So the talib of ilm, the student of knowledge, has to learn those and have an understanding towards it. Now he's going to go to the next qa'idah now. So that was all the first qa'idah. Now we're going to go to the next one. Naam. Naam. وَمِنْهَا أَنْ مَشَقَّةَ تَجْلُبُ تَيْسِيرِ أَنَّ الْمَشَقَّةَ تَجْلُبُ تَيْسِيرِ 
The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he's now moving on to the second Qa'idah. So we mentioned one Qa'idah already, and now he's moving on to the second Qa'idah, which is that the Mashaqqa, Tajribu Taysir, Mashaqqa brings, Mashaqqa is burden, hardship brings ease. Now the usage of this word Mashaqqa, um, the Shari' the Kitab and the Sunnah doesn't use it. Uh, that it doesn't use that word. And rather, um, we do find mashaqa in ibadat. We do find hardship, the word hardship. Um, because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ So we do find it. So the best thing that the Sheikh should have said was, He should have used the word, الْعُسْرُ سَبَبُ لِلْيُسْرِ Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى so that would have been a better usage of the word. So, mashaqa it brings taysir. Naam. Wa banu ala hadha jami'a rukhas al-safar. Wa takhfifa wal-ibadati wal-ma'amalati wa ghayraha. The Shaykh rahimahullah, he said that based on this qa'idah, the usuliyun, the scholars of Usul, Banu ala hadha jami' ruqas is safar. All of the ruqas means the ease. The Sharia built it matters pertaining to traveling. When you're a traveler, you shorten the prayer, you don't have to fast. All of that the Sharia based on what? This qa'ida. Wa takhfifu fil ibadat wal mu'amalat. And making it easy matters of worship and matters of transactions. They based it on this qa'idah, which is anna al tajlibu taysira That ease brings, it comes with, or the better word that we use, which is al-usru uh, sababu lil yusri. And the evidence for that is the ayah, fa'inna ma'a al-usri yusra, which is in surah al shar uh, surah alam inna uh, alam na sharah laka sadrak ayah 5. Naam. وَمِنْهَا قَوْلُهُمْ لَا وَاجِبَ مَعَ الْعَجْزِ وَلَا مُحَرَّمَ مَعَ الْضَرُورَةِ um, Now we're going to go into another qa'ida, which is the third qa'ida that the Sheikh is mentioning, which is لَا وَاجِبَ There is no obligation مَعَ الْعَجْزِ When there is weakness and when there is lack of ability وَلَا مُحَرَّمَ And there is no prohibition Ma'addarurati when there is necessity involved. This qa'idah goes hand in hand with the ayah Fattaqullaha fi Allah. Mastata'tum as much as you're able to. Even the fear of Allah, Allah connected it to what? Our ability. So anything that a person is he can't come with this obligation. Taqwa of Allah is it obligatory? Yes. It is it is wajib. But it's connected to what? Your ability. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said in another ayah, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah does not burden a person above their ability, above their taqah. So if a person is unable to pray standing up, he can't pray. فَإِنَّهُ يُصَلِّي جَالِسًا The person prays sitting down. وَمَنْ عَجَزَ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ جَالِسًا And anyone who can't pray sitting down, what does he do? صَلَّى وَهُوَ مُضَّجِعٍ he, sit, he prays and he's lying on his side. Where is the hadith for that? The hadith in Bukhari, in hadith Imran ibn Husayn, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, Salli qa'im and pray standing up. He said, Fa illam tastati, if you're not able to pray standing up, uh, faqa'idan, sit down. Fa illam tastati, fa'ala jambin. If you're not also able to pray sitting, then pray on your side. Pray on your side. So this qa'ida is from the qawa'id. Al-Muqarrara fi sharia It's the, from the qawaid which are solidified, which are mentioned in our religion. Um, and also the other one which the Sheikh mentions in the same sentence. So the first part is la wajiba ma'al ajiz. We spoke about that. Wala muharrama ma'a wala muharrama. And there's no prohibition ma'al darurati when there is necessity involved. So if a person is in a state of necessity, then the matter becomes permissible for him. And this is what this is what the usuliyin say in other words, in other term, in other wordings they say it. Al darura tu tubihul mahdurat. Necessity 
permits the, imper the impermissible. Necessity will permit for you something that is impermissible. Now, this issue of ad darura people have taken it to an extreme. The issue of darura people have pushed it uh, and dragged it to an extreme. So it's important that I put in place for you all this qa'idah which is ad am ad darurat tubih al mahdurat the necessity it brings uh, the necessity it brings uh, the impermissible so if something is a necessity you're now permitted the impermissible first of all i have to explain to you before i go into the conditions what is necessity a lot of people think necessity means if it's a life and death situation and that is one view of the scholars but that goes against the arabic language some people think a necessity actually is if you're going to lose a body part or if your life is on the line for what nafs Ha, huh? your nafs is going to go, or for what to udwin, or your body part is going to go. That is only when it's a necessity. That isn't. Nah. Also, that's what it means. Now I'm going to give you guys the conditions that for something to be a necessity, for us to say this is darura, it has to meet these criteria. It has to meet these conditions. Then and only then does it become what? It become a a necessity. The first thing is that the necessity and takun al darura. That this necessity, لا تندفع إلا بفعل المحظور. We can't get this necessity cannot be removed unless we do a haram. The only way we can is only by doing this haram. There's no other op option. If we're able to find another option, إذا أمكن if it's possible, دفع الضرورة to remove this by what? بغير ذلك المحظور other than this prohibited thing. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُقَالُ At that point, we don't say that you're allowed to go and fall into the haram if, we're, if we've got another alternative. Example for this is, it is impermissible يَحْرُمُ الرَّجُلْ It's haram for a man بِالنَّظَرِ إِلَى إِمْرَأَةٍ أَجْنَبِيَّةٍ It is impermissible for a man to look at a woman that is a foreigner from him. He's not allowed to look at her. And the Sharia, did it prohibit that? It prohibited it. It prohibited it explicitly. And it also it prohibited it implicitly. For example, Allah says in the ayah, فَلَا تق... وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا Don't get close to zina. In another had ayah, hadith, sorry, in a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, لَا تَتَّبِعُوا النَّظْرَةَ Don't follow a look بِالنَّظْرَةِ with another look. فَإِنَّ لَكَ الْأُولَى The first one is for you. I mean, if you look at a woman by accident, Allah will forgive you for the first one because it was by accident. وَلَيْسَ لَكَ الْآخَرَ But the second one is not yours. Or if you keep looking, it's not for you anymore. The moment you look by accident, you turn away, inshallah, you're not held account for it. But if you keep looking, it's impermissible uh, for you and you'll be held account for it. So, you're not allowed to look at a woman. This is a something which is mahdur, haram. But we have an issue here. This woman, هذه مرأة المريضة, she's a sick woman who's ill, has an illness. And... The necessity, it, her situation is that she requires for a doctor to deal with her situation. And the doctor who's going to deal with her involves, he has to look at body, her body parts in order for him to, um, in order for him to uh, work on her, or whether it's surgery or whether it's any other means, he has to look at her. And we also looked for a female to do the situation, if there is a female doctor, and we also gave up. At this point, it is permissible for this woman, this woman, to be dealt by a, a male doctor. It's a darura. It's a necessity. Good. So he's allowed to look at her. That's the first condition. We don't have no other option. We couldn't find a female. If we have a female, we're not allowed to resort to him. But uh, if she can get cured without the doctor having to see her and in other, any other ways, then that other ways has to be taken. Good. The second condition is that it's possible and yumkin This impermissible act, we are definite that it's going to rebel, it's going to get rid of, and it can repel the what? It can repel the necessity. By us doing this haram, we are sure that the situation which is the necessity can be uh, uh, done. For example, let's take the same situation. A, a girl, she goes to a doctor and she, for example, has, she's burnt, her skin is burnt, and she goes to a doctor. And the doctor, the doctor, 
is he hasn't specialized in skin and this is not his uh, field of special uh, and uh, his field of expertise he doesn't know this for him to go and say i will do what i can in the sharia he's not allowed to look at her if he doesn't know anything about this field he's like everyone else he's not allowed to look at her and in this uh, in this point a lot of the fuqaha and the usuliyin they add to it the issue of alcohol and i always use this example and which is if a person's in the desert and they're very thirsty and they may die out of thirst are they permitted to drink alcohol the scholars they say usuliyin they say it's not permissible for him to drink alcohol the reason is because alcohol doesn't fulfill the need of thirst rather increases the thirst it is what okay. it increases the thirst but it is permissible for a person to remove something that is in his throat he's about to die because he she's choking on something and the only thing you could find is what the only thing you could find around him is alcohol he drink to remove it can he do that yes it can but can it get rid of thirst in the middle of the desert based on that no so it's not permissible because it can't fulfill the need of it can't fulfill that need uh, of removing the necessity that was there the third condition that the ulama they stipulate to this matter is that the person does that the person doesn't do the min al mahdhuri from the thing that is prohibited he doesn't do it except illa bi miqdari ma tantafi'u bihi al darura he does it to, ex- to the extent that the necessity is. So he doesn't do, for example, you, you had that uh, a pint of lager or whatever, the alcohol that's next to you. So what did you do? You sipped it to just remove it. You're not allowed to carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on. No. What you do is, you stick to the necessity. The darura is at its for example, a doctor wants to work on a, a female and he has to see her, for example, he has to look at her, uh, 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 he look, has to look at her stomach, for example. Now, the doctor is only permitted to look at that part of her body. Because that is what the darura is. He is not allowed to look at any other place of her body. The only place he is allowed to look at is, that's why the scholars, they say, الضروراتو تقدر بقدرها. The darura we, we count it to the necessity that is. The prohibition is only limited to what is needed. We don't go above it huh, at all. The fourth condition that the scholars, they stipulate to this matter is, and they, can, they put in place is, um, is that the person has to try to remove this necessity he himself first of all he has to try it himself to get rid of it before he results to this it has to be the the final there is like the final huh? he has to try it has to take every other little tr- methods that he could in order to get to this and this should be his final result there's no other way he can get out of it that when those conditions are met, it is important. Now, what I really want you to all understand is, um, since we're talking about the issue of necessity and darura, there is a matter which I have to explain. All of this I'm saying is just a regurgitation. It's just me repeating what I've already said in what? I already said in Qa'id al fiqiyah This author, his other book, Qa'id al fiqiyah I've already explained that over there detailed. But there is a matter that I have to go over again and explain it to you all. Inshallah ta'ala, which is the issue of darura. If you're in a state of darura, and the state of dah- you're in a state of necessity, and meaning you're in a life and death situation, and you go by a, a, a group of camels, you go by a group of camels, <laughs> what do you do? You, and you're about to die, life and death, you have to eat. So what do you do? You go and you slaughter yourself one of the camels. Is it permissible for you to do it? Naam, it is permissible for you. Because of darura. Now, the owner, is he allowed to request for it? Can the owner 
of that camel say to you, I want the money, the money of my camel in return. You've killed my camel, I need the money for it. Or is he not allowed? The scholars, they say, if when you slaughtered that camel, you slaughtered it because you wanted it for yourself to eat, then you have to give what is known as Baman. He has the rights to request the money for it. And you have to pay him back. But if his camel it charged at you and it was about to kill you and you shot it. You shot it because it was about to, so both of them are necessity. He was about to run you over or he was about to harm you or did something to you and then you fought back against it and you killed it. Then there is nothing on you. There is nothing on you. Now, um, so based on that, those points, brothers uh, and sisters, um, the scholars, they bring a lot of matters out of لا واجب مع العجز ولا محرم مع الضرورة. Um, a come, pay attention. The Sharia, when it requests and it uh, commands you to do something, it, is, can, it connects to it uh, ability. When it tells you to do something, ability is attached to it. But prohibition ability is not attached to it. Because it's what? It's to stay away and not do something, ability is not connected to it. But to do something and to go out of your way to do something, there is an ability that is needed. And that's why the Prophet said in the hadith, وَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ If I order you a matter, فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Come with what you're able from it. Do it based on what? Come with whatever you're able to do uh, from it. Naam. فَالشَّارِعُ لَمْ يُجِبُ عَلَيْنَا مَا لَا نَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ بِالْكُلِّيَّةِ The Sharia hasn't made obligatory on us. The Sharia has not made obligatory on us that which فَالشَّارِعُ لَمْ يُجِبْ عَلَيْنَا It hasn't made obligatory on us that which we are unable to do bil kulliya by by kulliya means in totality. There are things that we can't do partially, but bil kulliya in totality that isn't the case. The Sharia observed the Sharia observed our ability when it was legislating this. It wasn't done for a. It wasn't just done. This, this law didn't just it wasn't passed, huh? Knowing that you guys can't do this, never. So anything you find Allah has commanded you to, commanded you to do, you are lying by saying I can't do it. You are lying by saying you can't, you can't do it because we have to either attribute oppression to Allah and zulm, and our belief of Allah is that He's what, He's just, and Allah Tabarak wa Taala He doesn't oppress anybody. Subhanahu wa Taala. And we also attribute to Allah knowledge, complete knowledge, that Allah is fully aware of you, who's, who is, is His creation. Allah is fully aware of you as an individual, what you can and what you can't do. He knows it very well. So when this law was passed, it was based on the knowledge that Allah has of you and knows of you. And it's also based upon Allah Ta'ala's adl, justice. So, um, anyone who says to you, Akhi, this is too hard for me, I can't do it. This is waswasum. It's a whispers from the whispers of shaitan. Shaitan is whispering to you. Um, shaitan is whispering to you. But then I, I have to explain to you. It's if the person says, I can do it, but I can't do it for now. Then la la shak. That's partial. That the person can't do it. For example, the salah. If a person says, I can't pray at all because I haven't got the ability to pray at all, then that is incorrect. But if the person says, today I can't pray standing up, we'll say to him, no problem, sit down. He said, I can't pray sitting down even today. We say, lie down. So he lies down and prays. So the Sharia has observed that. Naam. وَمَا أَوْجَبَهُ مِنَ الْوَاجِبَاتِ فعجز عنه العبد سقط عنه وإذا قدر على بعضه وجب عليه ما يقدر عليه وسقط عنه ما يعجز عنه 
Now we are speaking about the issue of Isqat al-wajib The Sheikh is talking about the issue of what? The wajib being uplifted from you The issue of uh, the issue of the wajib being uplifted from you There's a isqat kulli Sometimes the sharia It uplifts the wajib in its totality from you For example This matter is obligatory You have to do it And the person says I can't fast Ramadan is in And he says I can't fast The sharia came and said Forget the fast Don't fast that whole day That is all lifted from him That's called isqat kulli All of it some of the things, the second type is what? Isqatun juz'i ama isqatun Isqat juz'i, naam Isqat juz'i, which is The sharia uplifts some of it from you Not all of it, but some of it And that is like what? I can't pray today The sharia says, okay Part of it now be lifted from you What is it? You don't have to pray standing up Okay, pray sitting up then he said, I can't pray sitting. Then lie down. So the Sharia, it didn't, if you're unable to pray the Salah, the Sharia has never ever lifted up the Salah from you. It has not lifted, lack of ability, the Sharia doesn't lift the Salah from you. Whereas fasting, you can't, the Sharia doesn't say you can't fast till Dhuhr. Okay, fast after Dhuhr. Limadha, why? Because some of the wajibat, yataba'ad, yatajazza. Some of the wajibat, they can be broken into. Are you with me? Some, no. It's either found or it's absent. But there's a third one which is disputed. There's a third one which is disputed. Some of them try to put it into what? They try to put it in, into that, isqat kulli. And some say, some try to put it into what? Isqat juz'i. Or they try to add it to the, uh, the, the wajibat which are, yataba'ab. And some say, لا, لا, لا يتبعض. And they put it into that. Which is the issue of wudu. The wudu. If a person can do wudu, but he can't, for example, do it on his head today. Because he's got a big wound on his head. So what does he do? Some of the fuqaha, they say, he does what he can do with the wudu, and he finishes the rest off with the tayammum. They believe that يتبعض. Are you with me? Others have said, لا, he can't do wudu, part of his body. The whole wudu is lifted from him. He just he needs to move on to the tayammum. That's all lifted from him. Wudu is not is not on his shoulder. And we spoke about that in details when we were talking about al-qawaid al fiqhia So the Shaykh here is trying to say, Wama jabahu, anything that the shari', shari has made obligatory. Min al wajibati from the obligatory matters. Fa'ajaza anhu al abdu and the slave is unable to do. Sakata anhu, it's lifted from him. Wa ida qadara ala ba'dihi, and if he's able to do some of it. 